Hi, it's you and Ellery here making Bonsai in Australia and in this video I'm going to talk through what you can do to actually develop a little bit more thickness in your bonsai. Now I kind of want to take this approach from a couple of different angles because I have had um, a couple of people on my channel leave comments saying that they'd like to see videos of how they can develop a bit more thickness in their trees. But I've also had a couple of other comments around you know, the, the content that I'm producing on my channel uh, and yeah, basically looking into why I'm pruning trees that are still quite underdeveloped. So wanted to address a couple of those questions in this video. So the first thing I'm going to say is for the purpose of this channel with content I do produce, um, a lot of it is around yeah, making new bonsai from fresh materials. So it's not really about, you know, um, very established bonsai and how you can get that straight away. It's more about how you as someone who might be new to bonsai can look to yeah make something new make something nice and develop that with time so for that purposes um, yeah I'll go into start going into some of the the reasons or some of the ways you can develop a lot more thickness in your trunk and then into a number of different areas in which that might be applicable or not applicable to you so first up, one of the, the main ways in which you can develop a lot of thickness in your trunk um, is, well, other than <laughs> to, to buy a tree straight off, of course, um, is to have something that you grow for an extended period of time and let have a lot of vigor in that tree. So an example of that is my recent willow leaf ficus. So with this one, it has been grown for an extended period of time in, um, in a pot. Um, now I would normally, with my plants that I'm developing to get a little bit of extra taper, if it's not something I've already put into a bonsai pot, I will normally have it into, in a training pot, which preferably quite large to just allow a lot more vigor and a lot more root growth. Um, but alternative to that and superior to that, is actually just planting in the ground. So if you've got something that you can plant in the ground for a few years, you're likely to get quite a lot of growth and as a byproduct of that, quite a lot of thickness in the trunk. So that's the main way in which you would develop a, a thicker trunk is, yeah, quite basic really, just let your plant grow. Um, but there are a couple of other methods that you can put into play um, and those are mostly around um, you know you can do experimental measures or where you kind of cheat um, such as your, your clump style where you have a few um, a few different trees so let's say for instance a, a maple or a ficus that you kind of merge together as young saplings um, and then you get more thickness because it's multiple trees or you can do experimental measures so I'll include a brief snippet of a video just recently where I actually did a bit of an experimental measure and we'll see how that goes in future. Alright, so now that we've seen that, just to get, yeah, use a bit of, um, just used a bit, an old dead trunk from an old tree that had died, um, and I just wrapped a ficus around it just to, to give it a go, see, yeah, see, basically use the, the old dead wood to add a little bit more size, let the ficus then grow over that, and hopefully a little bit of a feature to it. But the key essential aspect of developing more thickness in your trunk is to just let it grow. So now that we've got that underway and we've kind of focused on that, now I really want to go through, all right, well, how do we make this applicable and tailored to what you're wanting to do? So one of the main issues that I have with just pruning, let, sorry. <laughs> so one of the main issues that I have with letting something grow is that without pruning it back, you're not going to get that bonsai look from actually refining a tree and turning into something that is special. 
so if you just let it grow and then prune it back severely like you'll get a lot of thickness but you're not necessarily going to get that typical bonsai look so a case in point for instance is this ficus now this I have just recently pruned back so yeah it was quite an operation I've got, I'll leave a lit video up above so you can hit the, the link to see what I did to turn this into a bonsai but it was very poor root structure they really weren't developed in any specific way basically starting from from scratch with the nabari for this um, and the same for the, the the general trunk now there's a lot of thickness here but it's not really in a specific kind of like monzal kind of shape so we've got this massive thing up here which was just cut off by the previous owner um, so that's kind of kind of ugly I'm just hoping that will shoot off and then we've got these tiny other branches that we can't really use so if you just have something that goes wild in your yard you yeah you, you limit your options so that is why I would generally much rather to do something where over time you operate on that bonsai and do a number of prunings to then develop it so that's where another recent example of, of something that I've done is yeah again you've got the the poor root nabari I've got another video where you can check this out but the poor nabari um, a really ugly um, part of the trunk where it's just been let to grow and had an inverse taper that I had to cut off um, but then it's the the pruning process where whilst you know you're pruning so you're stopping it from growing you're also pruning it and cutting it back so that it develops that extra taper in a way that's going to be useful for you so you can see here for instance there's a couple of branches since I produced this video just in the last month or so that have shot off and those branches, once I let them grow, are going to become the new leaders. And because I've kind of styled it in a way already, every time I let it grow and then prune it back a bit more so it gets that extra thickness, but it also maintains that extra thickness in an appropriate shape. So that kind of then leads through to yeah something where you've had a few a number of um, yeah pruning exercises to it and it starts becoming more refined because you're not going to be able to get a bonsai straight off the bat if it's yeah <laughs> if it's very thick it's not going to look like a bonsai unless it's refined so with this particular bonsai um, if I let it grow originally and hadn't pruned it back it wasn't there were there wasn't any of this leafing along the, the trunks further back it was all out towards the end of the branches this leafing and the ramification that has come back um, it's only that far back on the branches because I have pruned it back so you're not going to be able to get that ramification and design it as a bonsai unless you do so do use some pruning on it so you need to do pruning but you also need to let it grow so I guess it's a little bit about deciding, all right, well, what's the thickness in the trunk that's applicable for you? Do you want behemoth-sized um, bonsai, or are you happy with something small? Like, there's different styles to a bonsai. So this one, for instance, is I'm happy keeping it quite small around this size. Could put it in a larger pot to, to give it more bigger, so that, again, it would get more thickness in the trunk. But I'm happy keeping it in a small pot for now. So, this is kind of an example of what I mean of just letting something grow. So, this I did some time ago, and it's Chinese elm, so it's just coming into, um, what would it be, spring tomorrow. Um, so, this is quite, yeah, it's new growth on it, um, but it's kind of the, the structure that I wanted from when I last turned it into a bonsai. So, it was very thin and very small. Um, when I initially started designing this as a bonsai um, but yeah the idea here is to to let all of this growth grow um, and then refine it and prune it back so that it gets a little bit more thickness but then maintains that bonsai shape that I'm after so this one in particular um, and the same for this one I'm quite happy with them being around this size ultimately I want a little bit more thickness on them um, 
but I want that thickness to be designed in the shape that I'm after. So look, I hope you've enjoyed this video or taken something from it. If you have, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to be notified of my future content as I release it. So thanks for your time today. Enjoy. Bye.